Okay. I'm going to read again um, the book of Malachi, chapter 3. This time around, I will read the three verses from verses 1 to 3. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord, whom you seek, shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom you delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like a fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the son of Levi, and push them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. There are a couple of things that we could discuss. There are a couple of things that we could um, look into from, from these verse, verses and do an exposition on them. But what we are focusing on, remember, what we are dealing with is this issue of the gospel, the centrality of the gospel, the reality of the gospel, and the content of the gospel. And we've come to this point where we want to look at the gospel in the life and the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, and also in the life, the ministry, the teaching of the early church. So the first verse says, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And that is talking about John the Baptist. He was the one that went ahead of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was the one that prepared, he was the voice that was shouting in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make, make his path straight. And then we, in talking about the ministry of the Lord Jesus, we have to talk about the ministry of John the Baptist. And we, we, we ask ourselves, what was John's message? And we saw in Matthew, we read this before, chapter three, verses one and two, that John the Baptist was preaching in the wilderness and I think that was really quite revealing that John was preaching in the wilderness I mean the wilderness is a place where there's no water where life is not in abundance we can almost say where there's no life wilderness talk about a place where there is no joy as it were where things are shriveling out wilderness almost described the true state of israel this time that john came to start ministry for 40 years there was no prophet for 40 years there was no prophecy for 40 no not 40 sorry 400 i wanted to say for 400 good years god was silenced there was no voice of prophecy there was no prophet in the land because the people of god they have moved away from him they have turned their back on God, as it were. And I think it was really, really quite pictorial and quite important when the Bible says that John the Baptist started preaching out of the wilderness of their situation, out of the wilderness of their circumstances, out of the wilderness of the nation. I mean, it's, it's, it's quite interesting if you want to talk about the state of you know their religion at this stage the the high priesthood has gone to the highest bidder as the lord jesus told us they've turned the house of god that's supposed to be a house of prayer they've turned it into a den of thieves okay people are seeking post and position and it's all about what can i get people are not much more interested in seeking God or serving God, they are much more interested in imposing themselves, showing themselves off. And it's almost like the situation in which we find ourselves today. This was a wilderness. This was a wilderness. Yes, John was in a practical, in a real wilderness. But just like we always see in the scripture, it was a prophetic picture. It was a prophetic picture of the 
true state of Israel when John began to preach. So one of the things we realize is that when God was going to deal with the wilderness of his people, he sent a preacher. <laughs> when God was going to change the situation of his people, he sent a preacher. I want you to realize, you know, we live in an age where people think that people preach, you know, that their preaching belongs to the, you know, the people that cannot make it or, you know, the no good, the weak people. No, 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 no. When we understand that the highest, the highest job, I don't want to call it a job. When we realize that preaching I mean, I'm talking about real preaching, that real preaching is the highest privilege, that to preach is a privilege, and that you should not preach unless you've been called, unless it's been, you've been anointed to do it. When we understand, you know, it was just like when the apostle was talking to the Lord Jesus about marriage, and after they've spoken, they said, if that is the case, it is better not to marry i think if we understand if i understand if you understand if the church understand what real preaching is all about maybe few of us it may be more of us will stop doing it when we understand the gravity when we understand the the issue at stake that when god was going to deal with the wilderness of his people he sent a preacher but he didn't send a, a flimsy preacher. He didn't send an entertainer. Okay, we are talking about a preacher that has a message. Okay, so John came preaching. I remember when the Lord Jesus went to places where people will not listen to him, where people were full of doubt, and the Bible says he could there do no mighty works. But the next thing we had is he went doing what preaching. He went preaching. So. The people of God, their life can only be described as wilderness. I don't know about you. Is your life, is my life in a situation where you will describe it as a wilderness? What you need, what I need, is a word. What I need is a preacher. We read this before. How can they preach except they be sent? What you and I need is a preacher. That preacher may be may be hearing it on on the internet hearing it on youtube it may be you reading a book but what we need is an anointed vessel through which we can hear the true word of god the true gospel that can liberate the true gospel that can change situation the true gospel that can bring the presence, the purpose, the provision of God, the glory of God into our situation, into our life. We don't need an entertainer. We don't need uh, uh, just somebody that wants to tickle our ears. The Bible says people they will heap for themselves preachers that will tell them what they want. We don't need those ones. They can minister to our basal animalistic need, but they bring no eternal value to our life they bring no eternal value to our situation they bring no lasting solution to our problems so john came preaching in the wilderness of judea and his message see the preacher is important but much more important is what is preaching okay we live in an in, in an age now where the focus is on just on the preacher the charisma of the preacher there's nothing wrong in the charisma of the preacher but let me tell you something the most important thing is the message when we are bearing the glory when we are bearing the power when we are bearing the true message then the messenger pale into insignificance i mean we 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 have we've, we've had history in the history of the church we are the vessel I mean, to all intent and purpose, is a barbarian, is a babbler. The Bible, the Bible says, "What we are talking about, Paul, you know, he said, what will this babbler say? His appearance did not command any form of respect. And we have seen that in the history of the church where men and women that are not learned. We you know they said that concerning the apostles. They said, you know, they were unlearned, but they took notice of them that they've been with Jesus. 
okay there's nothing wrong in being learned but what we are saying is that the most important thing is the message in fact this is why god tend to use the foolish of this world because oftentimes we get in the way of the message okay oftentimes our personality get in the way of the message oftentimes our personality hinders men from really focusing on the message you know the the theatrical the arrangement the distraction all these things become a distraction and people can no longer focus on the message oftentimes it is very important for the messenger to get out of the way to be humble to lift up the gospel so that men's faith will lie only in the power of the gospel not in the wisdom of men not in our own you know our own achievement our own accolades no when everything that we present that everything that we offer the only thing that we offer to the world is the power and the wisdom of the gospel so john came i've not been able to move this forward but i believe that god wants us to understand this very well that john came he was preaching in the wilderness of judea that when god was going to deal with the wilderness of his people he sent a preacher praise the lord 